Hello everyone, welcome to Pixel Maven's Retreat. Today we are working on a new project for Festive Friday. We have a new challenge that went live today. If you are new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell so that way you get notifications of new videos on my channel. So like I said, we're doing a Festive Friday project today and our theme this time is Thanksgiving because you know US Thanksgiving is just around the corner. And all of our inspiration items from the inspo list are all based on the th theme of Thanksgiving. So the four items that I picked from the list uh, are leaves, gold, a thankful theme, and the color cranberry. So I did pick four items. Um, of course, you only have to pick three. So you can choose three, create a project, and link up with us for this current challenge. So the great thing about this particular project is I was inspired by the last challenge where one of the items was use your scraps. And I just happened to have this piece of wood grain bark paper from Alta New already in my scraps bin with the gold on it and everything. And I had these other pieces from learning how to use the watercolor pens in in my scrap spin as well and I said oh you know what I bet you those would look really great together so that really shortened the timeline for me creating this project and uh, it worked great for Festive Friday so I'm going to show you how I put this all together. Okay so we're going to be using the Dearest Friend stamp set and it has all of these beautiful floral pieces as well as some really great sentiments and it does come with a coordinating die set so you can cut all of these pieces out super easy. And I just really love the way that this comes together with everything in one set. So fortunately, I had another piece of this wood grain bark and I had the gold already on it. So I pulled this out of my scraps bin and then I pulled out some of that apple red cardstock. So we can go ahead and stamp this stuff up and get it heat embossed. So I like to have a Sizzix sticky sheet in my stamp positioner because that helps keep this in place. Now it's not as sticky as it could be. I probably really need to replace it. Um, but it really does a good job of keeping small items in place. And that means too that you don't need to have your um, magnets like everywhere because the stickiness helps to keep things really just where you want them to go. So I already have the sentiment in here. I have it nice and lined up. And I'm going to be stamping it using the Antique Gold Pigment Ink. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to make sure that the sentiment looks nice and crisp and you know, sometimes you can't see it with the embossing ink. And of course the pigment ink works just as well. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp that on there. And that looks pretty good. So now I can go ahead and get some embossing powder on here and it will be ready for heat. Okay, so that one is ready to go. I'm going to just set that aside while we do the other stamping since it's also getting gold embossed. Um, may as well get it all done at the same time. So I'll pop this guy in here. And the sentiment is going to go right in the bottom corner. So I'll do the thank you. And I need to have room for the sentiment strip. So if I kind of eyeball that in place. And then I know where to put the thank you. Then we'll be good to go. So I'll be using the gold again to stamp this one. And the reason this time is the same. I do want to know that I have a really good impression, but when you're working with this textured card, you really, really, really need to make sure that the ink gets in all the nooks and crannies. So this way I will really be able to tell that it is really inked up well. And I might just add a little extra. good. All right. 
And I can go ahead and get some embossing powder on this one too. And now both pieces are ready to be heated up. All right, now that both of those are heat embossed, I can go ahead and add them to the card base and then they'll just be ready for the flowers when they are finished. So i add some liquid adhesive to the back here and get it up in the corner. Since it's going across the whole sheet, I like to make sure that I match it up in the upper corner where the fold is and bring it down and across. Then I can go ahead and get my strip in place. And I want to have the sentiment lined up right underneath. If it doesn't go all the way across, like this time it's not going to, that's all right. Beautiful. And then I can just snip this off. And the card base is ready to go. Actually, this looks like a great card without the flowers, but I think we'll add the flowers anyway. Okay, so now I just need to go ahead and stamp so that way I can start working on the watercoloring. And to achieve that no line watercoloring effect, I'm going to stamp with Morning Frost. So I just need to grab my pieces here. I'm using all three of the leaf pieces and the small flower arrangement. Actually my, let's see. Go. All right, so I just need to ink these up for you. And then when I do the watercoloring, of course, no line, you'll see these lines very faintly and you'll be able to watercolor right over them. All right, so that looks pretty good. And I can go ahead and get started with the watercoloring. Okay, before I get started with the speed coloring, I just brought out a piece of scrap watercolor paper. This is hot press, which is what I'm using today. And it's nice and smooth and it takes a lot of water, but we don't really need a lot of water for this technique. So I wanted to share um, how to use these effectively so that way you don't end up with um, too much color all over the place. So basically, all you're going to want to do is take your desired color, so this is warm sunshine, and just kind of squiggle it, if you will, or add some lines in the space that you want. You don't want to fill it in completely. Actually, you're not going to fill it in hardly at all. And then use a watercolor, um, just a plain water brush or a brush with water and make sure you have water flowing in there good and then just use that to move the ink around and what's going to happen is the um there we go that's too much water but the ink from the watercolor brush is going to stay darker on one side and then move lighter as you move away with your plain water brush. So again, you'll just kind of do a little squiggle or whatever to kind of fill in where you'd like it to be darker and then use your watercolor brush to move the color away and keep the color in place. All right, so let me do that with a dark color just to show. Here, I'll do it with the rubellite because that's a nice dark color. So again, I'm just going to kind of fill in a space and then use your 
water brush to help move the color away and to get rid of color too. So if you feel like there's too much in there, you can come back in the opposite direction and pull up color and get it on your paper towel. So you're definitely going to want to have some paper toweling with you. And you can see how you end up with a nice a dark edge and a lighter edge here. And that will help give your watercolor some dimension. Okay, so let's move on to the actual project and I'll see you on the other side for assembly. these guys are dry I can go ahead and add the dies to them and get these cut out so we can get them on the card okay so I've got my pieces all die cut and they look just gorgeous and now it's just about arranging them and making them look really nice with the sentiment So, if I go along my original lines here, kind of liked that. Okay, so then I just pull this top one off, then I can go ahead and adhere these guys first. And then I'll just use some foam adhesive on the back here. So you can see, except for the water coloring, this card can come together pretty quick. And we saw that it looks really great without the flowers in it too. So there's lots of things that you could put in this space. That will look really, really pretty and would work well with the wood grain background and the thank you sentiment. So just pop this guy on here. And there you go.
Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you learned a few tips and tricks that you can add to your crafter's toolbox. Don't forget to stop out at festivefridaychallenge.com to check out our latest challenge and to link up your project. I will be back again soon with more videos, but until next time, happy crafting.